hallway and welcome back to my playthrough of Nine Noir Lives. Such wonderful books. Cuddles has a collection too, but they're pretty much all about investigating or food. These are about everything. If I start poking around with these, I'll never get anything else done. Some of these are almost a hundred years old. Licking them would destroy the covers. That's the world. I love Firth. Spin, little globe. Oh, it's stuck. Plastic. Not very exciting. That must be where the microfilm reels are kept. This is where the newspapers for that month will be. This is the newspaper film for that month. Got what I needed from that. A spool of microfilm. I'll need help to see what's on this. Too small to read, even if I squint. Those don't go together. Mm, I don't think anyone's used this machine in years. <laughs> the light bulb needs to be replaced. Ow! Well, paint my pads and call me Gemma, that's hot. We'll need assistance to remove that. That's a big window. There's a latch at the top. Or kitty arms can't reach. So many exhibits. Let's see what they all are. The Sabertooths came over on little boats just like this one. It's a painting of Havelock the Smoochin, the inventor of the telephone book. Such an annoying cat. It's his fault we use symbols instead of numbers like other countries. He thought they looked... <gasps> An original Jim Jimmy Jimson? How exciting! And from his cloud cat face, too. I've never seen one so well preserved. That's worth more than I make in ever. I'm not going near it.
our ancestors had really scary teeth. That's a real spear. Wow. No wonder they never thought. I'm just gonna borrow this, Mr. Tooth. I'll be sure to put it back. Well, here goes nothing. Whoops. Oh, gosh. I really thought that would have been attached more firmly. Oh, gosh. I Oh, this is clearly a reification of the idea of enlightenment being revealed to cats by our embrace of the scientific method. How lovely. Oh, wait. The plaque says, My one-armed Aunt Hemima plugging in a light bulb. Towels are massively useful, but maybe later. I can't get behind the desk to lick that, and Edna will get mad if she sees me anyway. Edna! The bulb in the microfilm reader is very old and faint. Do you have a spare? We don't keep spares. Try squinting. Edna! Could I borrow that towel? Does someone need muffling? No. I just want to pick something up with it. Oh, too bad. I loaned the grasping towel out to the zoology department yesterday. This towel is only for noisy students. <gasps> I need the muffling towel. There are noisy students in the library. I don't hear anything. I need to be careful with this. It is a weapon, after all. I can reach the window with this, but what then? Fun festive sounds are coming in from outside now. Those don't go together. If they can stop a jaw, they can stop a door, as Mom used to say. <laughs> They'll definitely keep the doors open. This should keep those pesky doors open. I'll pick up the girls before I leave. <gasps> I need the muffling towel. There are noisy students in the library. 
Ugh, you hear that, Ruckus? Someone's wooing in the microfilm room. What? How dare they make so much noise? They need to be taught a lesson, you're right. But, oh, you had a really late night, and you've got all that spritzing to do. Why don't you give me the towel, and I'll take care of it. It's muffling time! I like your passion, Tabby. You are worthy to bear the towel. Now I can grab it. Nobody's gonna have use for a burnt-out light bulb. I'll just get rid of it. This should brighten things up. A gentle cat in the desert premieres amidst funding furor. A gentle cat in the desert. The hotly anticipated film from veteran director Hashtag Jack Spiker premiered with much fanfare at the Gibbon Theater last night with big celebrities, including Potter Lee, the famed auteur, in attendance. But no eyes were on Potter last night. Amid a flurry of controversy around the financing of the movie, Bartholomew Montemu, local actor and star of the film, walked down the red carpet with a mysterious but very pregnant cat on his arm. Bartholomew laughed away the accusations that the movie was sponsored by mob money, stating it was nothing more than jealous rumors. He was less blasé when asked about the lackluster critical reception of the movie. Critics have lambasted the movie for substandard acting, ooh, direction, and writing, uh, and say that MMF film industry cannot expect to grow with productions of this quality. A Gentle Cat in the Desert is likely to be one of the biggest flops of the year. Ooh. So Bartholomew is a movie star. Interesting. I wonder who the lady that accompanied him was. I'd better get a print out of this. This should be enough for cuddles. Better grab the girls and get back to the office. Shame. I wonder if he's still sleeping. Oh, did I sleep through the entire day? I had a dream last night, Ramon. I was in a forest, running away from mushrooms. Toadstools with stubby little toadstool legs chasing me through the trees. They had tiny, sharpened sticks in their hands and were yelling at me with their cute mushroom mouths. It, it was adorable, but I was terrified. What could it mean? Good evening, sir. Tabby, what are you still doing here at this time of night? You were passed out, sir. I wanted to be sure you were all right after your encounter. Oh, thanks, Tabster. I appreciate it. I I'm fine, though, really. Were you on the phone to someone? I heard you talking. Hmm? Oh, no, I was just telling Ramon about my weird dream. I was running away from armed toadstools in a forest, and I think my feet were made of rubber. Do you think it means something? <gasps> oh, did you eat any camembert before you went to sleep? You know how cheese affects you. I don't think so. Then it's probably just your subconscious panicking, you know. Oh no, what if the scary mobster cuts me into a million little pieces, Ramon? Oh, thanks. That makes me feel a lot better. The way forward is to focus on the facts, sir. And I've got a juicy one from my trip to the university. I found out something about Bartholomew. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Teamwork. Great stuff, Tabs. Let's hear it. Well... We were on the right track, sir, but missed the mark a bit. A Gentle Cat in the Desert isn't a book. It's a film. And not only that, Bartholomew was one of the stars. It was meant to be a tentpole production to catapult the Meow Meow Farrington film industry to worldwide acclaim. Wait, since when do we have a local film industry? Yeah, we don't. Not anymore. Gentle Cat was a massive failure, and when other films also failed to do as well as hoped, the entire thing collapsed. 
Apparently, there's a few paw prints in the cement somewhere in the city, and that's all that remains of it. Oh, and Bartholomew was in the movie, you say? Uh, that must have been before his mob days. Uh, not necessarily, sir. The papers back then were choked with speculation over where the money for the film came from, and most of them pointed at the mob. It might have been how Bartholomew first got involved with them. Interesting. Yeah, that would add up. Uh, maybe he promised them a nice cut of the profits, and it all went bad, and he had to pay off his debt somehow. Do you have a copy of the article? Just this photo, sir. Oh, wow, the premiere. Gosh, he looks so young. He, he looks uh, a lot like Edgar. But never mind that, sir. Take a look at who he's with. A co-star, maybe? Can't see the face. It's not her face that caught my eye. What do you mean? Oh, 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 but, but that means, Tabby, uh, how long ago was this? Pretty much three decades, sir. Well, now, isn't that interesting? Might explain why Edgar was looking into his father's past. Perhaps he was trying to find out her name, too? That sounds plausible. I think it's time I pay a visit to Mr. Montague and see what he has to say about it. Are you feeling better after your chat last night? I am now. Who is he anyway? Really, if you think about it, just a big cat with a lot of money. I bet he doesn't even own a decline machine. I like this city, Tabby. It's where I keep all my stuff. I'm not going to let those mushrooms scare me out of it. Those mobsters? Mobsters. Yep. Totally what I meant. <laughs> totally. Thanks for the help, Tabby. Time to wade deeper into this mess. Can't put it off any longer. I'm heading to Bartholomew. Good luck, sir. And be careful. I'll wait here until you get back. Thank you, Tabby. If you don't see me again by tomorrow, tell the police to look for me in Bartholomew's basement, I guess. Seems word is spread about Edgar. Looks like he knew quite a lot of people. What should I even add to that? Uh, Nutter Butter Investigations is looking into the murder. Consider hiring us for your next violent death. Funeral for Edgar Montemue will be held. Sorry, Edgar. Uh, I can't attend. I don't think mob families like law enforcement showing up at their personal events. Oh, Superstorm is gone. Must have gone back to Pepe. No matter who you were, it seems someone cared for you. Thank you, anonymous strangers. Ah, locked. Pepe and Storm must be out distributing pamphlets. I'm going to guess that the performers who stand on that stage don't go on to win any awards. Menagerie of sprays, ointments, and whatever's in that jar. Is that jam? A mysterious red button. The universal symbol for press me without considering the consequences. 
Ooh, a heart-shaped button. Does this open a secret drawer of heart-shaped candy, maybe? Let's see. What? Oh, whoa, what is happening? Why? Uh, that is uh, quite a bed. Goodness. It, ooh, is that a... Mm, and a... <coughs> oh, ho, ho, wait, yes. Well... Well, good. I've got that now. Stuffed deep in my briefcase where nobody uh, can see it. To um, ask questions. <laughs> or anything. Pose and pose and twirl and mwah, stunning cuddle. I'm here to see Bartholomew. Pickle now. Boskat told him to expect Kitty. Is Kitty in trouble? <laughs> I'm not in trouble. I'm doing my civic duty as the investigator of a criminal case to... Pinkle thinks Kitty should be careful with the word criminal. I... I, I didn't mean... Uh, I'm, I'm gonna go inside now. Kitty is not as dumb as he looked, then. Thank you, Team Boom Kijunta. Bartholomew stared at me silently after Tinkle left. Clearly, I wasn't the only cat who had slept restlessly. He wore the same clothes I'd seen him in the night before. He had bags under his eyes. The bite of whiskey filled the air. T Tim Va Tim Vanko, what now? Did you think his parents named him Tinkle? It's only this foolish city that still cleaves to the stupid tradition of giving children sappy names. He merely got tired of nobody in the city pronouncing it properly. So he shortened it. I, I, I see. So I guess you could say he crushed it. The flat stare I got told me that my attempt at comedy was not appreciated. Thankfully, he changed the topic, sparing me from more awkwardness. Do you believe that a son should pay for the sins of his father, Nutter Butter? I don't believe that anyone should pay for someone else's mistakes, especially if the price is death. But the world is an unfair place. Ah, and it is your job to make it fair? No, no. My job is to try. How noble. Your clients must find you a delight with your self-deprecating humility righteous words, and penchant for irreverent comedy. But what a family, Nutter Butter. Can justice be served when your sin is your bloodline? It can always be served. Sins aren't found in blood. They're found in actions. They, they can be traced to those who perform them and used as evidence to hold them to account. The big cat's keen gaze unnerved me. I had been ready to be yelled at again, threatened. Even ignored, but not whatever this was. Interrogated. Conversed with. So, do you believe that my son was killed because of me? Because of the actions I took? I, I don't have enough information to say yet. Have you done anything recently that would have given someone a revenge motive? Any overdue parking tickets, just for example? He did not like that. Not at all. His eyes narrowed, and one side of his mouth rose in a snarl to reveal bone-white canines embedded in blood-pink gums. Does this strike you as a time for levity, not a butter? You wield your graceless wit like a dulled blade, probing for... What? Information? Weakness? Guilt? Spare me the deflections and tell me. Have you considered... What I told you last night. He used his words like bludgeons. The bigger, the better. That was following. I could talk a lot, too. And I'd read all the books on my bookshelf. I knew words. 
I have considered it, Mr. Montague, at length, but you're not the first cat to threaten me, and I have no doubt the last either. So if you think I'm going to roll over the moment someone bigger than me bears his fangs, I need you to understand all cats are bigger than me. I won't be your lap cat, Mr. Montague. I don't report to you, and I don't work for you. I won't slink to your side the moment you snap your fingers. You don't like my jokes, that's fair. Black humor is far from rare in my line of work, but I can understand it turning your nose at a time like this. But I'm not going to stop being who I am for you. I'm a P.I. and not a police cat because I value my independence no matter which side of the law I'm dealing with. I told you last night that I would find your son's killer and I stand by that. I swear it, even on Edgar. I was ready to die right then for Tinkle to burst in and turn me into wet red kibble with his gargantuan paws, but it had to be said. I couldn't have done the case under pretense. He needed to know who he was dealing with. And, at last, it seemed he did. You surprise me, Nutterbutter, but do not use his name like that ever again. Uh. Very well. Do you have any information for me? I had to wet my tongue before I could continue. Out of the frying pan into the mobster fire. There are a few pieces of evidence I'd like to discuss with you, yes, but last night's interaction was heated, and I would like to avoid a repeat. We may, we will, be discussing unpleasant topics. Do I have your assurance that you will remain as collected as you are now? Collected? Yes, I will be as collected as I am now. I will nod and smile and pretend that I do not feel crippled by the loss whenever I think of my son, or filled with unquenchable rage to punish his killer. Your mother should have taught you not to judge a cat by the shine of his coat, Nutter Butter. My pain is vast. It would swallow you, and you would drown in it, alone and forgotten, mewling forever. I am not collected. I am enraged. I stared into eyes that burned like holes into a place beyond the world. A terrible place. And then he blinked. And they were simply eyes again. But my suffering will not aid you in finding the murderer. So you have tonight, and tonight only, to ask me whatever questions you wish. I will answer them. All of them, as truthfully and calmly as you can hope for, and reserve my anguish for when I am alone, when it shall not bother you. I, I didn't mean... Orphan, widow, widower, words made of pain, for pain, yet they at least grant an identity. But for a parent that loses a child, nothing. The very idea is so terrible that we leave it nameless. So I am denied even that simple expression, and my grief must remain anonymous. And all the worse for it. Consider that, and hope that you never, ever feel anything a fraction as terrible. I wanted to say something, anything, that would show I understood, but, but did I? I'd come here to stand up to a bully but I'd only succeeded in becoming the antagonist. I'd expected to have to face down a monster, but all I'd found was a cat in pain. Mr. Montanue, do you have someone, or someone you can talk to, I mean, about what's happened? He didn't say a word, but I saw a look in his eye that answered my question. I am so sorry for your loss. Your sorrow is meaningless to me. Tell me what you have found. I found this business card on your son's body. Do you know where it's from? Celestine. Who's that? A mercenary of a cat. That's his business card. He owns the establishment, a venue that myself and other cats like me use as neutral ground. 
but I've only ever gone there with Team Boon Kill Junta. Edgar knew of it, certainly, but he never expressed the slightest interest. Worth following up on? If Edgar was there, that tricky two-color cat would definitely have taken note. If only to find a way to exploit it to his own ends. Well, I'll pay him a visit then. Can I have the address? You'll find them not far from here, across Herod Bridge, in Cabacon Street. Your son made a note of something. He, he seemed quite keen to keep it a secret. A gentle cat in the desert. A movie title, it would seem. We did some poking around and discovered that you have an interesting history. An actor? <laughs> I, I would never have guessed. Am I the first actor you've met, Nutterbutter? You seem disbelieving that we exist. Well, you exist, but you don't advertise the fact, either. Did Edgar know of your previous occupation? Before recently, I mean? I don't think so. I never brought it up. It was so long ago, and I didn't want him to. To dig into the drama around your final production? I have a theory about where the murky trail of funding for that film ends. How did you get your foot in the door of this line of work in the first place, Mr. Moncomio? Is it possible some of your investors sought to get some long-delayed recompense? That's not a theory, it's a hypothesis. A very fanciful one. Well, then give me some facts, Mr. Montemu. Your son starts looking into a film you made decades ago and dies. Did he speak to the wrong people? Or something else entirely. I, I couldn't help but notice a very pregnant cat standing next to you on the red carpet. The dates add up, Mr. Montemu. How is his mother doing? He kept his expression mostly still, but his mouth twitched unhappily at that. I hope the story you're spinning is entertaining you, Nutterbutter, because it is a fiction. Spiderwebs and shadows. You are correct on one count. That is Edgar's mother. Barely. She had other ideas about where she wanted her career to go, and a child did not fit into it. That cursed film was the end of my acting career, and the end of her involvement in our lives. If Edgar was looking into my past, he would have learned nothing beyond what I told him when I felt he was old enough. That he had one parent who loved him, and one who did not. I've heard from your staff that whenever Edgar visited the club, he'd invariably go to your office. Except last night. Why's that? Are you sure you're an investigator, Nutterbutter? <laughs> I was out of the country. Of course, he didn't bother going to my office. Does he only go there if you're around? Do you socialize outside of work? What did you talk about last? How is any of that relevant? If you're fishing to ask if we'd had a fight, we did not. He was just taking some time to be alone. He had the other key card for my office elevator. He knew he was free to come and go as he pleased. As for what we discussed last, the loss of his friend, the expansion of the business, goals for the future, mundanities. I found a bag of nip on Edgar's body. Nip? No. You are mistaken. I'm really not. I promise. The packet was in his clenched paw, as if he'd just received it. He apparently met up with someone at the club, and they acted somewhat suspiciously. Listen to me. Edgar did not take Nip. I understand Edgar had not been to the club in months. Have you seen him personally in that time? Could he perhaps have picked up some new habits? I've also heard that you do not tolerate drug use by your staff, but does that extend to your family? It's not as simple to fire a son as it is an entertainer, uh, for example. Is that a reference to Platy and her unseemly dependency? Yes, I know of it. She doesn't hide it nearly as well as she seems to think. But as long as what she takes comes in a bottle, served over a pharmacy counter, I don't care. When it starts coming in a bag, smuggled paw to paw in a dirty alleyway, then I take action. Uh, all right, but you still can't be certain Edgar wasn't indulging. How close were you two? Could he have been hiding it from you? 
Do you know any nip addicts, Nutter Butter? It's not something you tuck into a pocket and turn to when you have a free moment. It consumes your life. If Edgar was involved, I would know. And beyond that, he was distraught that a friend of his had died of an overdose, furious even. He had come to hate Nip, as much as I do. Your staff have some theories about what happened. I'm sure they do. Tinkle didn't see anything odd, apart from Edgar even being at the club after such a long absence, but he did note that he seemed very upbeat. Did anything happen recently that might have improved his mood? Not that I'm aware of, but we had not spoken in a while. Miss Kitty says she heard Edgar coming back into the club later that evening, along with a cat she recognized the voice of, a big, mean type, she claims. I would not trust anything Platy claims to have seen or heard after 2 a.m. That's her indulgence time. What she sees or hears then is liable to get... Uh, confused. If you say so, but I, I did find a very large footprint next to Edgar's body. Larger than anyone who works for you. Then investigate it. Do you need my permission? No, I... Uh, never mind. Finally, Pepe says he saw Mouse Zilla, but... I think we can discount that. You might find Pepe's convictions ridiculous, but he is not insane or blind. He is loyal and trustworthy. Mousezilla is obviously not real, but if he says he saw something, I'd give him the benefit of the doubt. You must have accumulated quite the rogues gallery of enemies in this business, Mr. Montanier. Can you think of anyone that might want revenge? I am older than I seem, Nutter Butter, and I have managed to outlive most of my enemies. Those that remained would not strike at me through my son. If you believe they wouldn't, doesn't that make it the ideal way to catch you by surprise? No ancient rivals, no young upstarts, the, the catulates I've heard mentioned. You simply don't know enough about how things work in this city, Nutter Butter. There's a hierarchy, and on top, two families stand supreme. Mine and the Catulets. They have their domain, and I have mine. We do not jockey for position. There is simply no chance they would have done this. And any small organization, they would not risk annihilation. And that is certainly what would befall them if they dared a move like this. Well, I'll still keep my eye on those as options for now. If that's all right. As you wish. Okay, that's all the information I have so far, Mr. Montemil. Then I imagine you'll want to get back out there and start gathering more. You know where the door is, of course. Okay, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe.